Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and you're in for a real tree it today. Okay, I'm gonna see myself out. That was absolutely horrible. But this one is an interesting one. This is another add-on for the Godot game engine. It is called Tree 3D or GD Tree 3D. I'm not sure which one they're gonna go with because they seem to go with both. I'm gonna call it Tree 3D from now on out. Uh, this is actually implemented as a GD extension, but the fastest way to go ahead and check this one out is to head on over to the GitHub repository and grab the code this way. If you're interested and you like this one, do give this guy a star. And yeah, so let's go ahead. Uh, let's fire up a terminal. Here we go and make that bigger. And what we're going to do is cd into our temp directory because of course we are. We're going to make a directory called YouTube, switch into YouTube, and then git clone, paste our repository right there, and let that come on down. All right, so here we are, the Godot project launcher. We'll go ahead and import in our new project. So that is available in temp, in YouTube, in GD Tree 3D. And you'll notice there is a folder inside called demo. Let's go ahead and open that one up and import and edit. Now this is a procedural tree generator. You're gonna see exactly what I mean now. So here you can see it creates trees, a wide variety of trees. And these are all procedurally generated. I will show you this process from beginning to end uh, as we go right through this. Uh, the performance from my limited tests have been quite solid. As you can see, you can get a pretty wide variety of trees. Uh, these are all being driven by a number of parameters. So let's find this guy so this guy is what is it are you okay so it's tree six all right so here we are tree six and you're gonna notice over here you got a number of different settings you've got a random seed for everything so we could go ahead and say 22 and get a completely different result right there you got a control over how the trunk is created such as things like the height of the trunk like so so as you see we're getting much taller or we could make it much shorter uh you got the amount that it grows by the amount that the the leaves actually drop in each direction. You can kink the tree in a certain direction. You can twist the tree around itself uh, and you can control the length of the tree. So the length and the height, I'm not 100% certain what the difference is right there. Now let me show you the process of creating this yourself. So let's go here, scene. We'll create a new scene right here. And like so, we'll add a light to our scene just to, to have some some light in the world and then what we're going to do is go back here go to add new and you will find there is a tree 3d in there and then boom there is our tree 3d let me go back to our light and just move it up above our tree and over a bit so there is our tree uh in the world again you can see these are a number of pre-created ones you got a little uh flyby camera shows you them in action real time like so, you're going to notice these guys all have leaves. We currently do not have leaves. Well, that is not ideal. So we're going to show you how to go ahead and set that one up. So with our tree selected, selected over here, uh, we go ahead and set up. So you got trunk and twig. Again, random settings you can handle here. You can give it a random seed and get a completely different result over here. What you're going to want to do is set up the materials. So we've got a trunk material and a twig material. We're going to do the trunk first. This quick load already one defined. So you can see here we've got trunk material. There it is in loaded. Obviously, you could use your own uh, for the different leaf styles if you wish. Here is the twig material, and there is our tree. And again, we got control over a bunch of properties. There is the amount of clumping of our tree, the max clumping there. We've got the uh, droop amount, which is my favorite. So let's go find drooping. Uh, where did droop go? Oh, drop. There we go. So we can have it go up or down, create a variety of different types that way. A sweep amount, one sided or the other. And of course, this is all procedurally driven. So if you want to change one of these values on the fly, you can do exactly that. Now, on top of that, this is a pure procedural system. So if you want to do this entirely in code, that is your option. So let's go ahead and set this up a little bit better. So let's go ahead and create a camera in our world. Uh, we will position it a little bit this way. A little bit that way. That should be relatively centered. All right, there we go. So we've got a camera for our world right now. Uh, we'll grab this generated tree and move it over here a little bit. And let's go see what our scene looks like. See if that guy's in frame. All right, there we go. So now what we're going to do is show you how you can use code to create one of these guys. All right, so first thing obviously we're going to need to do is attach a script. We're going to do the root node of our scene. We're just going to right click and say attach a script. Sure, default name works for me. So now what we're going to do is procedurally create a tree. So 
we will go ahead and create a new variable called tree and it is a tree 3D node and new like so. So once we've got our 3D tree created, uh, we're going to have to do a couple of other things. So when we first load our scene or so when we do uh, ready, we're going to go ahead and set up the material. Uh, we've got a trunk and a twig, exactly the same thing that we did manually. Just now we're going to do it in code instead. So here we're going to do load our resource and we're going to do, so this one is the trunk. So material trunk like so, and then tree dot material underscore uh, no, twig equals load. And then now we find the other material, which is material leaf. No, twig. There we go. Uh, so like so. So now we've got our uh, tree loaded. And then finally, what we're going to do is go ahead and add it to our scene. Add child tree. There we go. So we got a tree with the material added to the scene at the origin. Let's go ahead and run this scene. And presto, we now have a second tree in our world. So now that you've got a procedural tree, there's all kinds of things that you can do with it. Uh, one of the things that we could do with it is change it over time. So let's do this. We're going to go ahead and add a timer to our scene like so. New timer in place. And now what we're going to do is in ready, we will call our timer, the connect function on it. Oh, sorry, the, we'll connect the signal of timeout. So this is by default one second. Uh, and when that timeout occurs, we will call our method change. Uh, and then let's go ahead and we will start our timer like so. And now we need to do our function change. This is going to be called every tick of our timer like so change. And all we will do is go tree and dot seed. So the random number seed, we're just going to go ahead and change that random number generator dot new. By the way, you should cache this and not create a new one every every uh, second. But uh, random integer of a range between one and say, 10,000. So what we're doing is just randomly changing out uh, the generation seed for our tree, which would give us basically a new tree. But you could change out any of the properties we saw. So if we go back to our 3D scene over here, our tree, you can know all of these various different values here. You could change any one of those. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, have it uh, lean in the breeze, you could easily do it with uh, like the sweep, like so. You could do a sweeping tree just by changing the breeze amount each frame, like that. Uh, so we've got this created. Let's see if our code actually works on the first shot. Go ahead and run it. So every second, we're going to get a new tree. So as you can see, procedurally generated trees, both in the editor as well as uh, using code. Uh, the only thing that I found that is a little iffy, first off, from the asset library, it's in GD extension. It doesn't install well. This was the best way to install it, just FYI. Uh, and second thing that I find annoying is you can't select the objects in the, the editor. I, I don't know why this is with certain objects in Godot, uh, but for some reason, you can only select it from the tree list. That's the only thing I have found. Oh, tree list, ironic. Uh, this is the only thing I have found with this plugin that isn't, you know, pretty awesome. Uh, otherwise, again, you've got a broad variety of tree options that you can work with. We'll go back to the uh, original, here we go, the original scene here, uh, and we'll run it. You get an idea of the type of trees that this guy can generate. Uh, and again, you could create different leaves, different materials, swap them out. You've got control over uh, how these trees are generated. You can change them up on the fly, programmatically, etc., and get a pretty broad variety of trees going on. They seem to be fairly lightweight. This is a GD extension written in C++, so the performance is pretty solid. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is Tree 3D. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it will be available at GitHub. Uh, it is under the MIT license. Uh, if you are interested in grabbing it, like I said, it is written primarily uh, in C++, a little bit of GDScript tossed in there, which is being identified as Python. Uh, if you do like this project, do give them a star. Uh, but yeah, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Tree3D, a procedural tree generator for the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.